Today, three words that signaled a pivotal moment in the Michael Jackson manslaughter case. The prosecution rests. Starting today, Dr. Conrad Murray and his defense team began to make the case it was the pop star, not his physician, who was to blame for his own death. ABC's Jim Avil has been following every twist in this case, and he was at the courthouse for us again today as the defense began. The people are prepared and would ask to rest at this time. And it was a strong enough case for the judge to deny the first move of the defense, a motion to dismiss, order a not guilty verdict from the bench, and send the jury home. Judge Michael Pastor said no, ruling that a reasonable jury could find the defendant guilty. I think the prosecution case has been extremely strong. So now the defense begins with new surveillance tapes showing Dr. Murray's BMW arriving at the Jackson mansion at 12.50 and Jackson's entourage 10 minutes later. Jackson family members watching again in the front row with reports that Michael's most famous sister Janet has postponed an Australian concert tour to attend. Here are the key defense witnesses they can expect to see. LAPD detective Orlando Martinez testifying about what eyewitnesses said the day of Jackson's death and how their story changed. Randy Phillips, the promoter of Jackson's This Is It tour. The defense wants to portray a Jackson desperate to perform because his finances were a shambles and Dr. Paul White, who the defense hopes will say that propofol is safe to use for sleep and Jackson could have self-injected the fatal dose of propofol. This afternoon, Detective Martinez, the first of the big witnesses, admitted that Michael Jackson's bodyguard, who testified in the prosecution case that Dr. Murray ordered him to hide propofol bottles, did not say that during his first police interview. Did you ever hear Mr. Alvarez mention anything about putting away uh, vials for Dr. Murray? No. The defense strategy appears to be concede Dr. Murray's negligence, but deny that the propofol and sedatives Dr. Murray administered alone killed Michael Jackson. They're going to try to show uh, demonstrably that propofol at the levels that they say were administered could not have caused the death. Many legal experts believe the key connection to this case is whether or not Dr. Murray's mistakes led directly to Michael Jackson's death. Or did Michael Jackson do something with propofol or sedatives when Dr. Murray was out of the room?